Welcome to the first ever episode of the Rock Solid Sports Podcast. Uh, today is Tuesday, April 9th, and we've arrived. We're so here, and I'm so excited to be sitting on this couch and recording this first episode. It's been such a buildup. I can't wait to get into it. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're hopefully we're going to put together a great product for you, on, you know, for us. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> this is going to be fun. It's going to be great. So, uh, other than that, more men's basketball. UConn goes back to back. South Carolina, perfect season. Coach Calipari may be on the move. Well, let's talk about it. Let's do it. We're going to make it, baby. here oh, yeah. we've arrived yep. rock solid is here rock solid is here and it's here to stay and it's going to be here for a long time uh my name is joey scott i am one of your hosts i'm the other host my name is jackson smith uh, a couple of our producers you'll see later uh creative director photographer uh, a couple more of us mm -hmm. uh, you will see soon <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah other than that this is you know our new experiment our new podcast yeah new youtube Mm -hmm. uh, we hope to bring some exciting stuff. I think you guys will find exciting. Hopefully some cool guests that, uh, you know, maybe you wouldn't be able to hear from on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get a couple interviews from. We're going to do some cool stuff, uh, cool videos, golf videos, top golf, basketball, mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff. So, oh, yeah. So I hope you guys. All around the world, baby. All around the world. Get on the train now. Let's do it. Um, other than that, might as well get straight into it. Let's do it. The UConn Huskies, back-to-back -back mm -hmm. national champions. Oh, yeah. Dan Hurley's in inevitable. Oh, yeah. He, he's such a good coach, and that's such a good team. You'd need the perfect team to stop them, which is hard because UConn happens to be the perfect they team. They happen to be the perfect team. Uh, 12 games in a row that they win a game by 13 or more in the mm -hmm. tournament. Absolutely dominant uh, for the second year. Like, it's it's incredible to do it one year. To do it two years in a row where you don't, you don't let a team come within 13 points of the final score. Yep. That's just it's, – it's very impressive. Uh, just a quick recap on the game. Both teams came out hot out of the gate. Uh, I think it was 13 to 12 or something like that before the first whistle was even blown. Uh, Zach Eady was getting to the rim with ease. Cam Spencer out of UConn. He, he's such a good basketball player. Fundamentals. He was so smooth out there. Um, straight into the first media timeout, Cam Spencer looked like he was the best player on the basketball mm -hmm. court. Then after the <laughs> after the media timeout, Zach Eady, he showed why he was the two-time player of the year in college basketball. He was amazing in the first half. Uh, other than that, <laughs> Purdue really couldn't get anything to go. No. Uh, I mean, UConn is such a sound team. And if you're not playing the exact best basketball that you possibly can, UConn's going to roll you. It doesn't matter how good you were through the season. It doesn't matter how good you were the game before. If you don't come with your best game possible, UConn will roll you, and they will let you know. UConn, in early foul trouble going into halftime. It didn't matter. They are still up six. Uh, Purdue played probably like an A-minus first half, uh, besides not hitting threes, which is what they're usually good at. Uh, and they're still down by six. That just shows how good this UConn team was. Um, second half highlights, Camden Hyde. Yeah. I don't know if anybody saw that. Maybe we can clip it in here. Maybe one of the best dunks I've ever seen in college basketball. Yeah. Put back dunk. Mm -hmm. Really gave Purdue some momentum. Uh, other than that, he, he actually gave Purdue their first bench points, and I think yeah. that was four minutes into the second half, which is insane. Yeah. Um, Sam Sam Johnson comes in. Or Samson Johnson, my, my fault. My apologies to him. Comes into the game, two lobs, really turns that game away, kicked the game around for UConn. Yeah. Other than that, like before that, it was kind of even kill. UConn was still doing their thing, but after that moment, it seemed like. UConn just ran away with it. Yeah, I mean, throughout the, the whole point of the game, up until kind of those points you were talking about, it was kind of back and forth, and it was them just going at it the whole time, just good basketball. I mean, the whole time you kind of could tell that UConn had that upper leg on them. Uh, but, yeah, as the game went on deeper into that second period or second half, it just made it, it – it, they didn't have the stamina to keep up with the UConn stamina. They just could go further, and they were a better team. 
and it showed in the back half of that. Last eight to ten minutes, UConn kind of just runs away with it. Uh, final score ends up being 75-60. to 60. Um, Credit to Purdue, though. They were by far, I think, the second-best team in college basketball. Oh, yeah. I don't think a lot of people, including myself, wanted to give them credit. Um, but Zach Eady proved why he was as dominant as he was, mm-hmm. at least in the college basketball level. I don't know if that would be able to continue going forward into the NBA. But uh, in college basketball, he, he proved that he was one of the greats, and not, not just this year, but like maybe ever. No, yeah. I mean, his size is so above so many people, especially in men's basketball where size isn't that hard to come by. He has extreme size against all these guys. And you could see it like people were going up for – layups and he would just smack it away without having to even jump like he was just better in the paint than so many people were and you know I kind of agree with what you said about how it'll translate to the NBA I don't think it'll translate that well because there's a lot of people in the NBA they're very tall and I think you look at like uh, a Wemby or a Jokic who have that size but still have that athletic movement whereas then you look at ED play and he has really He's really talented, but the movement maybe not be there. A little tough for him to get up yeah, and down the so floor. so I think it's definitely interesting to see what we'll, what it'll be like. But for right now, it's just kind of my assumption of what will happen. But, yeah, not not the flashiest of endings to March Madness, but it, what happened is what's supposed to happen. It's the two best teams in the nation going at it, and I think we got a pretty good product out of it because, honestly, up until, like you said, the end of that game, it was very close and very competitive and very electric. Yeah, I think Dan Hurley had a great game plan. I mean, it was mm-hmm. it was forcing Zach Eady to score. I mean, Jokic, uh, you know, for the Nuggets, he's gotten this treatment, you know, a couple times in the playoffs uh, last year and other other years too. He where they kind of just force him to score and you just shut down everybody else, which you know that works. You know, sometimes on the college level, yeah. it works most times on the college level. Sometimes on the NBA because you know the NBA there's you know, there's other guys that could hoop. But, yeah. Uh, Purdue just couldn't <laughs> couldn't hit threes. They couldn't make shots. Um, usually, you know, they're one of the best teams at shooting threes yeah. uh, in college basketball. But I think only what one one last night. Yeah, one last or, night. Or, and was then, it eight? Uh, was it one or eight? I don't know. That's a boy. huge difference. But <laughs> but yeah, because you had UConn who went six for twenty two, and I mean that's the that's a fifteen to three point difference yeah. there. So that's a lot. But other than that, every single player on UConn contributed. Like it was seeing Cam Spencer. Uh, they're big man. He's he's a monster when he's in the game. Uh, even their backup big, like I said, catching two lobs coming in, looking very athletic. Uh, it, it was just impressive. Like honestly, to see, I don't think I've seen a college basketball team that dominant one since last year. It's a UConn team, but before that, honestly, like 2009 North Carolina, I think was had the second like biggest differential in points mm-hmm. throughout a tournament. Um, and it was just again, it's maybe not the most exciting thing uh, to watch, but. We got what was supposed to happen. Exactly. Just two really good teams playing. And honestly, I don't think this is going to stop. I think Dan Hurley is going to keep this program rolling. I think they're going to bring in more recruits now. We're going to talk about more if Dan Hurley's staying. But uh, people want to go to UConn now. They might be one of the bluest bloods now, Mm. especially in these last – I think it's been like since 1999 or something like that. They've they've won six. Like that's that's impressive. That's a lot, yeah. More than Duke, more than North Carolina. Uh, Dan Hurley, I mean, we got to give it to him for a second. One, one, let's talk about how psychotic he is. Oh, yeah. And, and it's psychotic in a great way, not, not a bad way. He, <laughs> Cam Spencer was dribbling the ball. This was kind of late in the second half. Already up 13, up 10. They're rolling. Mm. Cam Spencer's just holding the ball, trying to get into a set. Dan Hurley comes off the sideline, out of the coaching box, pushes his own player, and tells him to go dribble the ball. Uh, hopefully we can get the video for you guys. But. It was, it was hilarious. Like, you're not supposed to – he thought he was in practice for sure. He, he blacked out for a second. Oh, yeah. Uh, but you need that type of psycho. No, yeah, you need that type of guy because those are the guys that lead you to championships. You're never going to find – it's, it's hard-pressed to find a championship team where the coach is very laid back and kind of just whatever and, like, doesn't bring that intensity in. I mean, you see it a lot with, like, Saban. He's super, he was super on everybody all the time. Like, it doesn't matter if they were up by 40. He was going to be chewing players out, taking them out of the game if they weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. Those are the coaches that lead these college players to that next level and to that upper echelon of college basketball. I mean, yeah, when you when you put those names up to you know against each other now, it's Coach K, you know, the Roy Williams, uh, Bill Self. There's mm-hmm. 
countless many, but I think Dan Hurley has to start being in that conversation, uh, leading his team to two back-to-back -back national championships after three consecutive misses of the of the tournament. So uh, impressive by him. He, he he did say he did say you better come get them now because mm -hmm. you know they're they're coming and guess what they they're here now. So uh, shout out to Dan Hurley, the carpenter. Mm -hmm. Shout out to UConn. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, just impressive. That's all you could really say. Also impressive. 38 no. Sa South Carolina Lady Gamecocks mm -hmm. win the national championship. Perfect season. 38 no. They finish uh, beating Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes 87 75. Uh, 109 and three yeah. record in the last three years for Don Staley mm -hmm. and the South Carolina Gamecocks. They they are just so good. And it's hard to wrap your head around it, really, when you watch them play, because not only are they just well coached, because Don Staley is a dog, he's just dog. so good. Dog. But that team is so large, also like Cardosa. In that game, you would see people try to go into the paint, and there was just zero chance, zero hope. The only way they could get past Cardosa was doing like a weird layup to try to wrap around her to where she couldn't get her arms in front of it. Because she's very tall and it makes it really hard to get into the paint. And so when you have a person like that who can just shut down an entire area of the court, it kind of restricts Iowa's players into doing stupider things. Like you saw Kaylin Clark kind of starting to shoot from like half court Almost and just court. trying to force <laughs> a lot of things. But, yeah, no, that team is so good. and I, They're not stopping anytime either. They're also going to be very, very good for a long time. Dawn Staley wins her third championship at South Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, 2017, 2022, and 2024. Fifth coach to do so. I think I think they they could have won 2023. Uh, yeah, I yeah. If it wasn't for Caitlin Clark kind of being hot going into that game, I think they would have gone on to do this and probably have a three peat right now. And it would have been probably another perfect season yep. as well last mm -hmm. year. So, shout out Dawn Staley. I mean, it's it's impressive for her. Louis Vuitton Dawn. Oh yes. She put she puts her name in in the greats too. So it's just cool to see uh, these stories that get built through college basketball, mm -hmm. especially women's college basketball now too. Caitlin Clark, I mean, might as well harp on it. Twenty to uh, Iowa was up twenty to nine early, probably like in the first six minutes of the game. Yep. Caitlin Clark had eighteen points after the first quarter. Uh, she really slowed down. I know she was probably just gassed, so she had to do a lot for her team to even yeah. stay in the game with that talented South Carolina team. But uh, twenty-eight shots, forty minutes. She only finished with thirty points. Uh, impressive, but on 28 shots, you know, it's a little rough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just the difference, South Carolina, too big. Uh, Out-rebounded out them 51-29. to 29. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Kaylin Clark, I mean, I think another thing you got to think about when in that first quarter when she puts up 18, which I believe is the most ever scored yeah, in the first quarter, um, you start getting people to eye in on you more. Like, they, your name's Kaylin Clark. They were already doing that. But now they see, like, okay, this could become a serious problem. Like, she's on pace to put up over 60 points in this first quarter going forward. So it's like now we really dial in. Now we really lock her down and force the other people around her, which are good players. But when you, you go up against a team like South Carolina, when you force everyone else on the entire court to have to make up for what she can do, it can kind of fall apart at the seams as you go along. Stamina kind of breaks down and – yeah, I think I think South Carolina was just too good. <laughs> they were, they were. Uh, I, 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 a little nugget. I, I don't know her name, so I apologize for that. But it was after that first quarter, they South Carolina put their the girl that was kind of walked off by Caitlin the year yeah. prior mm -hmm. in the game, the Final Four game uh, last year, who kind of Caitlin was just like let her shoot, let her shoot. I think it was kind of personal. I don't I don't know if. She, that that girl took it that way, but it was definitely cool to see her come in, get that adjust. The coach trusted her, put that adjustment, go on Caitlin Clark, mm -hmm. and for the rest of the game, I'm not going to say she shut her down, but she definitely made it very made tough on Caitlin. Oh, yeah. And for that reason, she helped win South Carolina title this year. So uh, that's cool to see. Um, another cool thing to see is <laughs> this game: 18.7 million viewers mm -hmm. on ABC and ESPN. That's more than any other basketball game, mm -hmm. men's, women's. You know, college, pro, it doesn't matter, in the last five years. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, for a perspective, men's only had 14.8 this year. It's it's incredible to see, uh, you know, where women's basketball has gotten to. And, you know, I think it's only going to get bigger. Yeah, no, I agree. And, like, I think the uh, impact that Kaylin Clark has made on this game is extreme. Like, it's very palpable. Like, she is very, very 
much so bringing a lot of people into this game. And I think, you know, the Iowa coach said this after the game that, like, no matter what accomplishments you have, no matter what rings, what championships you bring in, nothing will top what you've done for the game. And, you know, all these little girls watching you and being like, I can be on that main stage. I can be this. I can be that. I think it's just awesome. And I think she's going to carry that into the next level. And I think a lot of these other players are as well. Uh, Cardosa, she's going to do it. I think Angel Reese will do it. I think it's just really awesome to see them do that. Yeah, the guard that uh, guarded Caitlin was uh, Raven Johnson. So mm-hmm. shout out Raven. Shout out Raven Johnson. Shout out Raven Johnson. Shout out Raven Johnson. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, incredible by her. Uh, Cardoza, the rest of the South Carolina Gamecocks. Uh, also shout out Don Staley at the end of the game, giving a shout out to Caitlin Clark too. I think she kind of heard the the spiral of heat that Caitlin was receiving mm-hmm. those last couple of days for no reason at all yeah. uh so she kind of gave her credit to like you know you're one of the goats of this this mm-hmm. sport um it was cool to see you know yeah. caitlin get her flowers especially from a legendary coach like don staley oh yeah uh if, if you're looking for a more women's basketball it doesn't end it doesn't end right now uh, the women's nba draft is in on april 15th in brooklyn new york uh and the, the season starts just a month later on may 14th so uh buckle up this might be the you know the biggest women's nba season of all time so no, far. I agree. I mean, this might be the first WNBA draft where a lot of people know a lot of the names that yeah. are going to go in this. And I think a lot of this popularity is going to carry over. And I think it's smart. It started small with like Sabrina going because Sabrina was kind of that same figure, not as much so as Caitlin Clark to bring that much impact in terms of people watching, but she kind of started that that fire she had that, the, the Nike deal, the yeah, Kobe, exactly. Kobe and connection. Then I think Caitlin Clark kind of took that little spark and really turned it into a bonfire that was picked up by Angel Reese and Cardoza and all these players, you know, Cameron Brink. Like, it's awesome. It's awesome to see. And I think this will really be, like, the first in WNBA season where, like, I really, you know, really try to lock in and really watch it because there's so many solid players going in there. And I, I can't wait to watch and figure out all these other solid players that are already in there. So I think it's just going to be fun. And even when November comes, Paige Becker's still in college basketball. Mm-hmm. She's her and Juju Watkins probably going to carry the sport. Yeah, I think uh, this upcoming year. It's it's really a miracle that we're getting Juju Watkins directly after Caitlin Clark. Like because she could. Hoop. Yeah, because she it would hoop. be really bad if like we had this like goddess of a basketball player on the court, and then all of a sudden there was like a two three year gap before there was really somebody else new that came in the scene. But we got a freshman in Juju Watkins that's going to be playing on a very solid USC team that's going to kind of carry that torch to continue boosting up college basketball. And like you said, Paige is also going to be there. And I think we're just set for like a really good long, long lifespan of this women's college basketball where everyone's going to be really dialed in. I agree. Uh, last little nugget I had is so far, I don't think I've seen any – athletes since LeBron James have this much motion before they get drafted into their their respective pro league uh, mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark she took a lot of heat yeah. um, this past weekend for no really apparent reason to me but uh, Phoenix Mercury uh, Diana Taurasi had a lot to say like, on you know the broadcast during the game but the Phoenix Mercury who De- Diana, Tar- Diana Taurasi does play for she is one of the goats uh, they did tweet uh, you know the goat versus the rookie and gave like this little graphic and yeah. stuff just to kind of I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, it just feels wrong to me. Yeah. But, I, yeah. but again, I, I think it's a good thing. Cause if, mm-hmm. if you could find hate in this, this sucks to say, if you could find hate in like these athletes uh, in this sport, it's a good thing. It means you care. It means people are caring because beforehand you never saw anything on Twitter about, I don't like this person. I don't like this person when it related to WNBA or women's college basketball. And I think you're right. It really does show that people are starting to really, really care about this and really like putting their passion into it like angel reese was a villain and mm-hmm. people could have loved it people could have hated it yeah. guess what you still watched yeah. what a famous pga mm-hmm. bowler <laughs> quote <laughs> uh, other than that uh i guess we'll move on to the story that might be bigger than the men's national championship yeah. coach kalapari uh, after 15 seasons and a lifetime contract at <laughs> kentucky is now out as the coach of kentucky uh, he's presumably going to arkansas to become the next coach of the arkansas razorbacks mm-hmm. Um, this is coming again after a lifetime contract with Kentucky, yep. 35 first round draft picks through his tenure there, yep. but only one title. Yeah. I, I think this is going to be a mutually pretty beneficial thing for both teams. I think Arkansas is getting a really good veteran season coach who has won and has sent a lot of players to like the NBA. Uh, and then I think UK's 
kind of getting a fresh slate. I think they're kind of moving past this hump that they just couldn't seem to get over. I don't think much was going to change in these next few years with Calipari. If it wasn't going to be this year, I could have seen it again a couple more years. I mean, back-to-back first-round exits, it's not really acceptable. And we know that they're a good team. They're good throughout pretty much the whole year. I mean, it's a tough SEC to play in with Tennessee and uh, all those teams in there. But, yeah, I, I don't see Kentucky really doing anything with him past where where we are right now to get over that hump. So I think it's going to be good for both teams to kind of get rid of the old, bring in something new, and Arkansas to bring in something that might give them that spark to really compete in the SEC and in the tournament. As you mentioned, two first-round tournament losses. And, again, you can you can lose some tournament games. Like, it happens. Mm-hmm. Like, Matt Painter with Purdue lost one last year. Huge. But, you know, you, you redem, you come back this mm-hmm. year, you rebuild. Kyle, Kyle Parry's losses were to St. Peter's in Oakland. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know the boosters and the fans aren't going to be happy when you're this prize program of the Kentucky Wildcats and you're losing to, no offense to them, St. Peter's and Oakland, which were coached. Yeah. St. Peter's had a great coach last year, great run. Oakland, Golke, yeah. Golke, gotta love Golke, but a <laughs> but like it's it comes to a point for the boosters. I know, especially when you know they're, they're cashing these checks that Calipari, you know, he's not using he he wasn't using the NIL to his advantage. He was kind of stuck in his ways, like we mm-hmm. talked about. Saban, Jay Wright, you know, they were kind of stuck in their ways, and they kind of wanted to get out of the NIL era of college sports. And hopefully Kyle Parry can maybe change his ways when he's going to Arkansas, maybe, you know, new boosters. Um, you never know. So, but who? <laughs> speaking of the booster, I, th- I think this is a cool story. Yeah. I want to talk about this. Um, John H. Tyson, okay, he's the, the billionaire behind the Tyson Chicken Nugget brand. He just happens to be friends with uh, Calipari. I, I believe Tyson's like 70 years old. I think Calipari's like 65. Uh, he's a giant booster for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Um, if anybody follows this college coach carousel that's happened, um, it's, it's crazy. So let me, let me break it down if, if you haven't. So the USC coach, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I don't want to butcher it. I think it's like Andy Einfield. Um, he was the coach at Florida Gulf Coast in 2013 when they had that crazy run, you know, the huge, the dunk, dunk city. Well, I forget what they called oh, yeah. it, but they they were huge. He goes to USC. He gets that job. SMU this year, uh, they go to the ACC. They, they need a new coach. USC's coach goes over to SMU. Musselman, the coach of Arkansas, leaves to go to USC. And then now we see the, you know, the, all the chips fall and Kyle Parry goes to Arkansas. Mm-hmm. John H. Tyson, the biggest booster for Arkansas, <laughs> he he attended three universities. If you could believe, yeah. Arkansas, mm. SMU, well, and USC. Well, that's all three. I don't I don't want to dive into conspiracies here. I don't think there's any conspiracies. I just thought it was a huge coincidence, and I thought that was just like a cool nugget that this whole coach carousel that had three coaches switch to different, three different schools just happened to end with the biggest booster at the final school. You know, that's all the three universities attended. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it's it's a conspiracy theory. So, like, you don't want to, like, really say anything truthful about it. But it's like, you know, you look at that situation and if you're surrounded by people who really like these schools and are really involved with these schools, you know, if, if it were me and you, it'd be like, oh, yeah, I'd love to go there because, oh, that's where he's at. Mm-hmm. And I love my buddy. And, yeah. you know, it'd be really a perfect match up there. So, you know, you can't talk anything truth about it because it's conspiracy and, you know, there's nothing really there. But, like, it's it's very plausible that he just wants to go there because of this guy. Yeah. These guys all know each other. Yeah. We're just kind of cycling through these teams. Like, that would just be awesome if he just – he was, like, the one who set all those jobs up. Like, he's like, Einfeld, I know a guy over at SMU. You know, let me let me put you in connection. Yeah. Or even SMU, let me talk to – go talk to Einfeld, mm-hmm. Musselman. Go talk to USC, yeah. and then he gets his boy finally in an Arkansas Razorbacks. I don't know. I, I doubt it's anything crazy, but that would that would just be hilarious. That'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> one other funny video. I don't know if you saw it. J- uh, John Calipari walking his dog. Hey, coach, you got anything no, you want to say don't. to your fans? I'm walking my anything? dog right anything now. Right now? You want to say anything yeah, to your no, fans I'm right good. now? I'm good. Come on, Paul. Come on, my dog. My dog is walking me. Come on. Come on.
Yeah, him and Paul. Yeah. Him and Paul. Just walking my dog, man. Just walking my dog. Uh, some news guy uh, out in Kentucky, you know, approached Kyle Parry out there uh, while he was walking his dog. And bad, bad look to have a stroller for your dog, but just not have your dog in it. And yeah. he's walking, which obviously gets your exercise. But, like, mm-hmm. it's, it's just so funny to see him walking with a stroller yeah. and his dog just right next to it. And that was, that was his dog's stroller. It is yeah. confirmed. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyle Parry just said he had nothing to say at the time. Um, about uh, I'm walking my dog. Yeah, that's all I wanted and, to say. I mean, I respect that too. Like, yeah, when enough. you don't have the right things to say, don't say anything because you're gonna end up making a lot of people mad with something that you don't mean. It was just quick to say. So I think it's smart of him to kind of hold off. And I really don't think he should say anything else. And maybe you know he made that video for Blue Nation mm-hmm. or whatever. But you know, I I think until everything's solved and everything's settled down. Confirmed. Perfect. I don't think anything should really be said about it. So uh, again, nothing confirmed yet. Um, at least not at the time of this taping. Uh, there's so no coach is a coach for Kentucky right now. Can, uh, Kyle Parry stepped down. He did release a video earlier today mm-hmm. saying, you know, it's time for him to step away from the program. Uh, he'll still always be a fan, but he said it's his time to let a new voice in there, like you said earlier. So wh- who who's going to be the next coach of Kentucky? It's a, it's a pretty job, but it's also a very very difficult job. It's scary. Yeah. I, if I was one of these guys, I you know it's one of those jobs where if you're already striving at a program that's usually not the biggest uh, basketball program or you know not known for their history, going into Kentucky is scary because you know if you're not performing in those first mm-hmm. you know one to two years, there's there's going to be a lot of heads just turning to you. No, yeah, I think it's also very comparable to kind of like that New York effect when you go into there with that New York media. It's obviously not exactly the same, but when you go in there, all these fans and all these people go to these games. They expect you to win immediately, or if it's they don't expect you to win the championship every year. They but, expect you to be competitive, but you need to be competitive. Like Sweet Sixteen every year, cracking the t- uh, Final Four every yes. couple of years, winning a championship. Yeah, like you can't go in there, split it in the middle of the road, not do that great, and people will just be like, "Oh, that's fine. That's not going to happen." So a couple of the coaches that were on this list that's already pretty much, you know, been debunked at least by them, by by their own doing, but. Dan Hurley, obviously at the top of the list, he just came off winning back-to-back NCAA championships. He's obviously the best coach in college basketball right now. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know that would be on the first of Kentucky's list, but, like, Dan Hurley's not going there. Mm-hmm. He, I think UConn's going to uh, cash him a fat check. And, uh, right. you know, just, like, kind of relates to Sarkeesian at Texas mm-hmm. football and Saban leaving. A lot of the rumors swirled easy, and he got paid. So yeah. I expect the same for Dan Hurley. Uh, he said he's focused on UConn on the Pat McAfee show, so yeah. I don't see him going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nate Oates, uh, Alabama, he said he's committed to Alabama. I don't see any reason he wants to leave. Yeah, no, I I think it's the same thing with Hurley as it is kind of with uh, Oates. It's just one of those things where they're already on the brink of these fledging you know, dynasties mm-hmm. that they have cooking. Like Alabama – has always been kind of competitive at basketball, but they've always been known as like that football school and nobody really cares about the basketball. But these past few years, Alabama has really been heating up. And I think this coach is a guy who's going to keep sparking that flame. He's going to keep pushing it. And so to leave would just be kind of stupid to leave a team that you've been building. And that's really competitive to a team that might fall apart a little bit with Calipari leaving. Some players are probably going to enter the portal and leave. So it's just, why leave, you know, this house that you've built to go build another one? It just doesn't make any sense. Um, Billy Donovan, he's the Chicago Bulls coach right now. Uh, he, before the game today, the game's going on right now, but before the game, uh, Billy Donovan said that he's not interested. He's focused on his job with the Bulls. Uh, hopefully the job on the Bulls are focused with him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll find that out uh, be his <laughs> later in the season. But um, best coach, I think, available, Jay Wright. Mm-hmm. Also probably not going. I think he's comfortable, you know, staying away from the NIL crazy mm-hmm. craziness. I think he's fine with his true TV money, yeah. uh, him and Charles Barkley together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I think he's the best option, but, like, I don't think he's going to go. And yeah. that really leaves only two names. Mm-hmm. Scott Drew at Baylor. Mm-hmm. Um, I could really see him doing this. He, he won a championship in uh, 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, he's showed success at Baylor, which always hasn't really been the greatest basketball yeah. school. Uh, he kind of led a – no name group like they're really talented but it was just like a no name group Mm -hmm. to a championship and a really like uh talented year like there was a lot of good players in the college basketball that year yeah no i agree he's the one of the guys i could see doing it just because i think it's almost that nato situation but it's one of those things where 
he's done good things, but he's not necessarily like starting this fledging dynasty yeah. in, at Baylor. Like Baylor's a very good team that can compete, but I wouldn't necessarily say is like a cream of the crop team that is always going to be like really, really dangerous. Whereas then I could see him going to Kentucky and making a team like that. Yeah, if he'll have the, the NIL money, he'll have the recruiting there. Um, and then the last one, which I think would be the most exciting, Rick Pitino. Mm-hmm. Let's bring him back to Kentucky. Yeah. Unfinished business. He yeah. he did say on Pardon My Take a couple weeks ago that the one regret he does have is like leaving Kentucky. Yeah. It's the one job he just never wish he left because oh, wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be so sick. Let's just bring the bring right back. the Sopranos right yeah. back to Ken- Lexington, Kentucky. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, hopefully, I, if Rick ever hears this, Daddy will. But uh, please consider. <laughs> please yeah. consider. Um, that'd be great. Uh, other than that. Um, I don't think we have any other thoughts. Any other, th- any other thoughts, boys? That's a no. A hard resounding no for them. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Jack Golke for ending Coach Kyle's career. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> ter- Mr. <laughs> Mr. Turbo <laughs> Tax. 16 threes through the first two games of the tournament and, you know, presumably end Coach Kyle's career at Kentucky. I, who would have thought? I know Jack Golke wouldn't have thought that going No, in. not at all. So shout out to him. Uh, <laughs> other than that, uh, we're going to get into an ad read and then uh, we've got a couple more things for you. It's time to spread love, everyone. Uh, Slove is not just Colorado's next and up-and-coming clothing brand, but it's a clothing brand who aims to bring a movement globally. Uh, when you wear a Slove piece, you're not just wearing a piece of clothing. You're ev- elevating your style and representing what love looks like. Uh, right now, I'm actually wearing a Slove cap, if you can't tell. Uh, great quality. Um, it's got me through some long days, long nights. Um, you know, it, it gets great compliments. It's a great conversation starter. Uh, my producer is actually wearing a Slove shirt right now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, make sure you guys join the Slove movement. Um, they're creating a world where love triumphs over hate and fashion meets compassion. Um, make sure you go follow them on Instagram at slove.co uh, or visit their website at slove.us. That is S-L-U-V dot co on Instagram and S-L-U-V dot U-S on their website. Go check them out. Go show them some love and they'll show you love back. Welcome back to the last portion of the show. Um, this is going to be like a part of the show where we kind of try new segments, try to make new fun ways to you know, talk about sports, interact with you know, gambling, mm-hmm. uh, futures, other, you know, a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah. So for the first one we're going to do is going to be called Gambling Corner. Maybe we'll workshop the name later in the future. Mm-hmm. For right now, Gambling Corner. Uh, there's a couple events coming up this week. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, two of the biggest events, actually. It's not just a couple events. Uh, we got the Masters. We got the UFC 300. Um, <laughs> who's who's not excited for the Masters? Dude, Georgia. Always the best time of year Can't when wait. that comes around. It, it's so great that, like, even people who don't watch golf will pull around to watch the Masters. It's just – it's the best part of the year, and it's one of those sporting events that everyone watches, everyone enjoys. There's just so much, you know, years behind it and all this legacy there, and it's so great seeing that green jacket come out every year. Can't wait to wait, listen to Jim Nance uh, oh, yeah. this weekend. Um, so we're going to talk about our favorite bets uh, of the weekend. Uh, if you are listening to this, gamble responsibly. Uh, 21 and plus, we are not sponsored by any gambling sites. We are sites. also not professionals. Not so at all. <laughs> gamble with your own money at your own risk. It is not our fault. He, he's close to <laughs> a professional as it gets, but not any of us. Um, so, yeah, what any favorite bets for you this week? Uh, I think my biggest favorite is just Scotty to win it. Uh, I, I know it's such a hard bet to put down, but he's sitting right now at about 450 on FanDuel. Uh, it, it, those are pretty good odds to take on a guy who, if he comes with his best, there shouldn't be really an issue for him to win it all. Uh, cause you also got Rory following up behind with plus a thousand John Ron, John Rom with plus 1100. I mean, the last person to go back to back was tiger in 2001, 2002, but yeah, I, I got Scotty. If he can just dial in his putting and that short game's good, it's going to be hard for anybody to really compete with him, especially if he really lives up to that moment and really performs. I don't really have any, you know, big bets for the Masters. Um, I, I, I saw the one, it was Tiger, I think it was like minus 125 to make the cut. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like that. I mean, obviously, just being a huge Tiger fan, yeah. obviously, if he stays healthy, I think, you know, uh, he has a great, great chance. That's all it is, really. Some per, some person, I, I forget, it might have been, who, who went with him the first practice round? It was uh, uh, Justin Thomas? Was it Justin Thomas or was it Dustin Johnson? I think it was Justin Thomas. It could have been Justin Thomas. Anyway, he got interviewed and got asked about it and he said that like this is some of the best tigers looked which you know this Tiger, like tigers down to a minus 104 to make the cut now so minus 104 yeah. so sorry about but 
Um, yeah, I, I again, I have no really huge bet. I, I think it'd be a fun one to have for the first two days, though. Mm-hmm. And then you maybe you make that second bet once the final cut yeah, you know, no, comes comes about. But uh, Tiger, I'm hoping he can, you know, make a you know a last little run at it. That's all we want to see. That's all we want to see. We want to see a red Sunday. But I, I do have a fun Rory stat I saw on Twitter today. Shout out Justin Ray Golf on 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 the X, formerly known as Twitter. Yeah. Uh, he he says he mentions everyone eats at par on par fives at Augusta. But it's truly staggering disparity for Rory. In his career, he's 94 under on par fives at the Masters. Mm-hmm. Amazing. But he's plus 67 on par three and par fours. Oh, man, that's, yeah, it's not great. But, I mean, you, you see how he hits the ball. It's 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 perfect or it's, eh. Yeah. Like, he every time I blink, I, see, I feel like I see a clip of him driving the green on, like, a long par four. A par four, yeah. So, it's, you know, when you got that much power, things can fall at the seams of other places. But, you know, he's just one of those guys who you don't really know how he's going to play because he's either going to live up to that moment or he's just going to kind of not show up. And he's not going to – he's always going to be around, but he's not really going to be there. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd love to see him go out there and really put it together and really have a really good Masters and it be really competitive in that top, you know, four to five golfer range. But, yeah, I think it's all about how he comes out. Uh, What you got for his hawk? All right, so for the Masters this weekend, I'm with Jackson. I've got Scotty Scheffler. I think he's killing it right now. He's on a roll. Um, I do have him top five just to play it a little safer. Mm-hmm. Um, I got that at minus 110. And then my other one who has also been playing well this season, although I feel like he hasn't been getting enough credit um, kind of being behind Scotty, Wyndham Clark. Mm-hmm. He's done well. I've got him top five as well at plus 475. Colorado legend. Colorado legend. Colorado legend, Wyndham Clark. Yeah. Uh, Caden, anything for you? This weekend, nothing set yet, but also Tiger to make the cut. I don't know if that's a smart bet or a heart bet, but it's what, it's what I'm going with. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Smart bet or a heart bet? Because mine's for sure a heart bet. It, yeah. <laughs> my, I don't. I don't really see much value in getting it at like one, what one hundred four now. Mm-hmm. But like, I th- it's it, it's a heart bet. And I think it's value for who it is and just how many times he's played it. But yeah, he I does. Just, he, he does know Augusta well. I just want him to succeed so yeah. and I think if he comes in healthy and I think if he stays healthy he should make the cut I mean knock on wood but if he stays healthy I don't see a world where he doesn't make the cut and just plays terribly because even when he came back recently he was playing good he was playing pretty good golf he just couldn't finish and he had to you know back out and withdraw but I think as long as he comes and he's good and you know his whole body's working his knees don't get too roughed up from walking around the course I think it'll be all right and the other big sporting event this weekend, uh, Saturday night, it's always you know, mm-hmm. it's always great when UFC title fights come around. Yeah. Uh, this one's Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. Um, Alex Pereira's favorite at minus one thirty six right now. Uh, I, I don't see a lot of value in it. I do think mm-hmm. Pereira is going to win. Uh, he he has not lost lost uh, a fight. He's lost one fight in seven years, and it was to Israel Adesanya. Yeah, and it took Adesanya three times to beat him. Going going back to you know, out of the UFC. Yeah. Uh, Jamal Hill also coming into this fight, only lost, losing one in the last seven years. I think those are, you know, that's why I just don't see a lot of value in taking, uh, it, it's close to, you know, even money at that point. When yeah, these are one of those uh, events where if you really are looking to make money off of them, you either have to be willing to put a lot of money on <laughs> like him winning or you have to kind of stretch to really get a lot of value. Like it's not really a, a cheap betters paradise no. on this UFC 300. But, uh, yeah, I think I think that Pereira 136 is pretty safe. I mean, the odds of the match ending in a KO or TKO are like minus 280, uh, which usually, you know, I feel like when the there's a fighter who's minus something to win and then there's a KO, TKO, minus something to happen, yeah. it's probably looking like Pereira is probably going to win. A fight going to the distance is set at plus 300. I, yeah. I don't. Like as great as obviously it sounds, it's like like you said, poor man's mm-hmm. betting. It's I, I don't really see that happening, especially when the the TKO KO odds are at minus yeah. two eighty on Fanduel. Uh, last, there's another title fight. Uh, we won't get into that one too much, but uh, my my other favorite fight of the night on there was just Justin Gaethje. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's an Arizona kid, but he fights out of Colorado, so yeah. we'll, we'll go another Colorado kid. We'll, we'll keep it up yeah. for the program. Uh, he's fighting Max Holloway. I think that's going to be an exciting fight. Both of those two just left to like 
just go at it. Yeah, uh, it's not going to be. There will be early going to be some defense played, but you know when it gets late in those rounds, they're gonna they're gonna throw throw hands. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be exciting to watch. Um, everybody, you know, tune in for UFC 300. It's gonna it, it's hopefully going to live up to the hype. I, 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 hopefully, it lives up better than the the poster that they yeah. they made to, to promote it. But um, the the press conferences, I believe, coming up Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they're set to have like all 30 fighters or 26 fighters on the on the stand for like the first time in a while. Yeah. So that's gonna be fun to see. 300 big event. Uh, UFC 300. They also said they have an announcement coming out of 300. So uh, McGregor fight in the future, hopefully. Love to see. Maybe the next Sean O'Malley fight. Who knows? Um, any thoughts, UFC? Maybe not even on betting. Just what you're excited for. Uh, I think. Unlike, which is why we said we're not professionals. I like, I like the fight going the distance at 300. I know they're both power hitters, but you think both of those guys go into the fight knowing that the other guy's a power hitter and that they're going to play it safe. Yeah. Or the exact opposite. Who knows? And Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway, I kind of can't believe it's minus 186. I feel like that's going to be a great fight. They have a going to uh, decision minus 115. Which I, I get for sure. Yeah. And I think that's going the distance. Hmm. Unless Justin Gagey clips him. <laughs> Which I I can see that. Yeah, but you can also see it the other way I as could, well. I could. So That's why we're bad at gambling. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything? I, I, my my knowledge in UFC is a little not as extensive as these guys, but I got Gagey. Um I know he fights out of Colorado, I guess, but repping Colorado, we're just keeping that keeping that line. And then I got Pereira as well. Um, I'm excited to see what this secret announcement is, though. I, I do want to see McGregor fight again. I think that'd be exciting. I we we talked about this on a couple of our uh, practice episodes. You know, mm-hmm. when we were going through it, trying to figure out what was the best way to you know do all of this. But we talked about it earlier, like you know Conor McGregor. We'll get, get like, similar to Tiger. Just give us one more. One more. Just give us one more. One more press conference. One more press conference. He's just talking out his ass. <laughs> hey, just saying whatever he can. You don't even have to like win the fight. Just have one good press conference. Yeah. I agree. All right, let's get into our last segment. Uh, this one, uh, cold brew, hot topics. Um, we're going to just talk about, you know, we, we're we going to have our episodes be formed around some major topics. We talked about college basketball today. Um, this one's more for just what we're excited for. There's, you know, some sports news that goes under the radar. Uh, maybe not even stuff we're excited for, just that we find interesting, uh, stuff that we may hate, you know, anything that – um, is interesting to us uh, as sports fans. We have our teams, but um, one thing I liked I saw this week, um, we had our solar eclipse that happened. That's not what, what I enjoyed. I did enjoy getting the 10 minutes off of work where I got yeah. to stare at it. That was fun. <laughs> um, but during the eclipse, Nike tweeted a, a promo video for what looks like going to be Victor Wimanyaba's new logo, new line with Nike. Mm-hmm. And the logo was just amazing. It's so sweet. Uh, they did like the whole aliens are coming, which is like the, you know, the eclipse. There was a lot of there was talk, a lot of conspiracy, a lot of, lot of conspiracy talk. In there. Yeah. So uh, to see Nike, whoever came up with that idea, I will, brilliant. They they did their little rollout, and it's they zoom out of this cornfield, and it's like an alien with like two Nike logos. Mm-hmm. It is incredible. Uh, I think that was genius. No, I agree. I think using that event to bring something that big out for such a huge name player, like a guy who came in to the league and everyone was kind of talking about, like, this is LeBron level. This guy could be him. This good guy could be the future. So far, it's looking like that. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, like, personally, I had my doubts coming in. I was like, I don't know. Like, yeah. he's good, but who knows? Uh, I've been completely proven wrong there. He's incredible. He's insane to watch. And it's just – it's awesome to see him kind of already getting that, like, super hype and – that just means he's got to keep it going. This early in his career, getting like maybe one of the coolest logos I've ever seen. In, in I've never sport. seen anything cooler. To be oh honest with like, I, there's not many that can. D Rose comes to mind with Adidas, but like, yeah. I still think this one takes the cake. Jokic, but maybe we're biased. Oh, yeah. the Nike Jokic one was mm-hmm. was tough. And what, the Kobe new one? with the Mamba, too. Oh, that was yeah, nice, that too. One was good too. Are you, were you referencing the Nike Jokic one yeah. or the new yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. Nike Jokic. I thought the Nike one was cool, too. Also, I don't know if I look too, too far into that logo. Because I really stared at it. So there's the alien, right? And then, like, right under it, mm-hmm. there's, like, the two things. And I yeah. feel like it's a V. 
and then right under that, there's like the two lines, and then they both go like this. W. So I feel like it's supposed to be VW oh, right under it. I don't like I said. I gotta look at it, Harlan. Yeah, look, but yeah, no, incredible. That's awesome. Um, that's what my hot topic was. Uh, what about you? Uh, yeah. Um, we had a huge announcement that the College Football 25 is coming out on July 19th. Super psyched about that. I mean, that is like the the biggest return ever. It's such a big deal because that game can come out and be not good at all. It could be terrible. It will literally sell out. It'll be the highest selling sports game of all time, probably. Oh, yeah. Everyone's been waiting on it for so long, and now the players are getting paid. We're finally getting it back. And I think this is just the first step into us also getting, like, college basketball video games back, MVP baseball back. Like, it's just awesome because – I, the reason I'm excited for it is because, like, the biggest problem I always had with NFL and Madden was just the immersion was kind of never there for me because, you know, there's 32 teams. You go into a franchise, you're going to play the same teams every single time. Mm-hmm. There's not much tradition there. Whereas in this, the presentation is going to be crazy. We've already seen uh, Kirk Herbstreet and all these guys recording lines for it and, like, talking about how they're stressing their voice and re-recording things to make it sound like it's actually happening, like – they made a recording for if you win a game by a guy fumbling in the end zone and getting a safety to win it. They've done everything. I think it's going to cover all the bases, and I think it's just going to be amazing. I cannot wait for July 19th. Uh, so many employers of guys my age, guys a little older, guys younger, <laughs> employers are going to be mad when like yeah. half of that population calls out. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying I am, but I <laughs> I might think about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the game's incredible. Uh, it's one of the games that kind of brings you back to your childhood, especially at our age. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one you get to do with your friends, the franchise mode. Oh, yeah. It's it's something special. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait. What about you? Same. It's going to be electric. I don't expect to go outside much after July 19th. <laughs> That's for sure. I might be calling out. We'll see. I got to get my PS5 first. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yes, you do. There Priorities. Uh, your hot topic. The Rockies are terrible, and that's a, that's always been a thing. But as someone who's not always been into baseball, and very within the last few years recently, been enjoying watching baseball, and being from the state of Colorado mostly, it is so hard to be a fan of baseball <laughs> with the Rockies at this point in time. They're tied with the Marlins for the biggest run differential at minus thirty-two. That's crazy. Yeah. In what, 13 games? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's like, like yeah, they, 10. They have a there. really good habit of like giving you hope for there for a second and then wiping it away. I was at the game the other day and they were up 6 1 going into the like seven. Yeah, I believe so. And then so. blew it and ended up losing by like three runs. Out. Shout out the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, it's just like it, it's it's interesting to sit there and watch that kind of baseball where they, at any given moment, they can just completely fall apart at the seams. I do, I do really respect you for continuing to rep, though. I mean, that's all that matters, you know. He's still repping the hat. You, hey, if you, you don't rep them when they're losing, you don't deserve to rep them when they're winning. I always will, but it it hurts. And at this point, like, I correct me if I'm wrong, I think they have, what, some of the worst cap space, so say, or, like, dead money pretty much in the MLB. So it's not a money-spending issue. I think it's it's just a competence issue, to be honest. they the, No one in the Rockies organization, and please let me know, Knows what the what is happening <laughs> and what they're doing. Do you, do you have any comment on Rob Manfred showing up to the game uh, and high fiving fans on the way in on I, opening day? I think he has. He's a brave man like, <laughs> yeah. to have the years we've had and openly be in the front gate, looking as happy as you could be is crazy. And also, I think this article came out like a week ago. Him talking about how he hates losing. And how it's the worst. I think that's crazy to me. Like, how can you say that? Yet we are actively the worst team in the yeah. MLB. And always, there's no effort to change that. Yeah, it's always been that pitching issue for the Rockies too. <clears throat> they've yeah. had years where they've had hitters, and they just no one wants to pitch here because it's, the elevation. If yeah. they get bat on ball, it's very easy to send that thing out of the park. I get it. Someone's you know we're gonna need a savior one day that's gonna have to give up ERA and. Mm except that they're going to have a high ERA, but the other team's also going to our, – our team's also going to be hitting nukes. So. Yeah. I, I hope the best for them. Uh, I've lived in Colorado for, I think, like 17 years now, something like that. And I know we had our little Rocktober phase, but I was really too young to 
one go to the games and like enjoy them if I wanted to, yeah. but also I didn't like the Rockies. Still, still really don't. But like, yeah. just to see, just to be a part of uh, playoff baseball would be special. Oh yeah. I don't want to travel all the way to LA for an expensive Dodger game when you know maybe the Rockies yeah. can, uh, you know, they can make something happen. Hopefully sooner than later. I want to just be able to go to a game, experience yeah. like a. You know, a, a playoff baseball game with my friends. I think that would be an enjoyable experience. Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. I've, I've lived in Colorado since I was seven. I moved here when Rocktober was happening, when they went on to, uh, I mean, unfortunately get swept by the Red Sox. But, you know, I think it was one of those things where I've grown up so much in my life here. And, you know, that they are, I can easily say, my second favorite team, which is tough. But, I mean, my first one is the Braves. But, you know. It, it's just one of those things where it would be really cool to see. We see what the place is like when, like, the Avs win or the Nuggets win or when the Broncos were winning. Like, that we see what this town can be like when the sports are good, and it's awesome. And I think if the Rockies were to get good, this that place would be electric because that is, oh, I think, be. one of the best stadiums oh, it would be in electric. America. It would be electric. Yeah. Any hot topics for you, Hunter? Yeah, so I want I want to hear your guys's – Dream final pairings on Sunday. Is it is it two or three people? Uh, the final pairing is two, I believe. Two, yeah. It's two? That would be I got Scotty pairing. and Tiger. <laughs> Scotty and Tiger. Scotty and Tiger would be phenomenal. Mine. I don't know that it'll happen, but it'd be well, dream, yeah. It'd be yeah. amazing. Dream, yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm kind of right there with you. I also wouldn't mind seeing like a Tiger Rory. That's exactly what I was going to say. Let's go throw back. On that, uh, they're also going in on that you know Monday night golf league thing. Which, by the way, looks awesome. We'll probably talk about that when it more comes out about it. But uh, no, yeah, I think a Rory in that, and like obviously seeing Ricky would always be awesome. I would love me some Ricky Fowler's. No way, probably, but it would be so sweet. Give me Brooks Kepka and shout out Dodger Nation Max Homa. Yeah, I like it. I I just want to see Brooks win one, but to see Max in the final pairing would be cool too. As long as Brooks doesn't you know fall off the wagon again. Yeah. <laughs> this year's. Uh, what else? I'd love to see Rory win. Yeah. That's that's the one he hasn't gotten, mm-hmm. and he's supposed to. He will. He's got to run out of time. I was about he to is. say he will. Yeah. T- Tiger's confident. Tiger says he will. Yeah. I trust well, in Tiger. How do we feel about sure. like? A lot of the live golf guys are like favorite in this, like heavily favorite. Besides well, Scotty I mean, and yeah. you look at the live golf Rory. and you say, well, they're favorite, and it's like, well, you also got to realize that they were also really, really good in the PGA. Yeah, they oh, just obviously. went, you know, because they got these huge contracts. But it's just funny to see they're all kind of yeah. favorite high right now with uh, yeah. Brook or not? Yeah, Brooks, Rom, Bryson, or Bryson's. I guess, yeah, but. yeah, you got John Rom trying to come back and do it again, which I don't know how likely it is, but you never know. Dustin Johnson's always a contender too. Mm-hmm. One of the live guys. Let's go. Um, last thing, I, I guess, if you want to just do your slight recap on WrestleMania, I don't. I know yeah. none of us are really huge no, into yeah. that. But I, WrestleMania is one thing, and just wrestling WWE is one thing I kind of grew up on, and it's it's kind of fallen off a little bit in the past few years. But I will say that this WrestleMania main event, in just precisely that was outstanding it was everything any wrestler would ever want they have triple h coming over he's taking over that uh mcmahon spot you know it's it's a new era coming to the wwe and i think it's really cool like if you liked it before and you've kind of taken a break i think if there's a time to jump back in on it be right now but yeah that main event you had cody rose taking on roman reigns who had the title for over a thousand days and it was just a build up and cody rose was there and then the rock was out there john cena the undertaker it was just really cool. The Undertaker was awesome. Oh, so sweet. Lights went off. He was yeah. there. It was so sweet. But, yeah, I mean, I had a really good time watching it. Every fight was really good. I think the stories that they're going to be bringing into are going to be pretty cool. If you were out of it, it might be time to get back in on it. That's your WrestleMania uh, review. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, other than that, we don't really got much for you guys. Uh, I hope you guys made it this far. Mm-hmm. If you did, thank you. Uh, make sure you go subscribe. Uh, go to Instagram. They'll all be... All our socials will be up top in this video. Um, make sure you go subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already. Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts. Uh, we do appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Um, I also appreciate all the people behind the camera. You know, rather than just me and Jackson, we get to sit here and talk about uh, sports and you know, act a fool. Well, you yeah. know, there's a lot of hard work going on behind the scenes. So if it wasn't for the people behind these these screens and stuff like that, none of this would be happening right now. So 
shout big out to shout them. out to the boys over there. Shout out to them. Uh, shout out to you guys for listening. If you got this far, we do appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be back next week yep. uh, for our second episode. So, yeah, thank you and see you there. See you then.